Today, we'll be making this. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna get is the YouTube bell, if that is something that you wanna have a part of your animation. So I just go to Google and then just type in bell, YouTube bell, go to images, we're gonna go to tools, color, transparent. And what this is, is it's gonna find all of the shots that have a transparent background. So when we bring the bell onto, on top of something, we can see the color from behind. Um, none of these. This bell looks like the uh, that notification bell and this one does too. So if we click on this, we can see behind we have the checkering that's just indicating that there's a, a transparency there. So that's the primary thing that you're going to want to look for when you're grabbing one of these. All right, so I have mine. I'm just going to bring it into my project. All right, here it is in my project. I'm going to go over to Fusion now. And in Fusion, we're just gonna right click New Fusion Comp. And you can set this to whatever you want your frame rate for this to be. Just note that if you set your frame rate to something different than mine, your keyframe timing is gonna be a little bit different depending on whatever the timing is that you want. So you're gonna have to uh, play with the project a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. So if I click on this, uh, by default, everything is five seconds in length, but you can just take this and increase the length. So my 30 frames part for me is gonna be one second. If you choose a different frame rate, well then obviously um, you're gonna to have to set up your keyframes accordingly. All right, so let's just jump right into here. Uh, let's just make the button itself. So we'll grab a background and we'll grab a rectangle, connect the rectangle into the background through the mask. That's what the blue arrow is. And then we'll just play this in the preview monitor. So we'll just drag into the preview monitor. When we come to the preview monitor, we'll release. And then I'll play over here. I'll just do this so we just have the one monitor. And then next we're going to, let's change the color. Just clicking on that background, switching the color up. Clicking on the rectangle now. I'm going to round the corners just a little bit. And then I'm going to bring the size down something like this. As you can see right now, my project is 1920, 1080. If you want to, uh, if you have a different frame rate, well then obviously you're gonna have to change your, your project to match that. But this is the way I export most of my videos. So that's perfectly fine. So, um, so yeah, that's my play button. Now I just wanna add some text to that play button. So we'll grab the text tool. I'm gonna go from the out to the out of this background because I want this to overlap on top of this. So I'll go from the background here on top of here and I'll make a merge and this merge will have the uh, green, this is the foreground and then the yellow is the background. If for some reason when you connect these and you go the other way around, that's perfectly fine. We'll just click on the merge itself and hit shift T and it'll switch them. So now that I have them switched, we're still playing the background up here, so we're gonna grab this, play this up here, and click on our text, and then type in subscribe. Okay. All right, now that I type that in, I can come in and change the sizing to have it match. The current version of the play button, I think is just flat. I don't think that there's a gradient in it. I think it's just a flat color. Because most like, um, that's kind of like the style of most stuff now is like that flat look. So we don't really have to add that gradient in. Okay, so there's my subscribe button. Uh, I just need to animate it, but I wanna add one other thing quick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this bell in because I'm going to uh, add this bell in the same way that some of this stuff was built. So we're just gonna grab this, these two nodes, the background and the rectangle, control C to copy, control V to paste, We'll paste this down here. We'll grab in our bell. I'm just gonna move all this stuff down so we have a little more space. And I'm just gonna uh, click here in empty space, hit shift space bar. And we're going to put in bit for bitmap. And I'm gonna connect this into here. And then I'm gonna grab another background. We're gonna connect this into the background. 
And now if I play this, we have the bell here and our background color, we can change this. And I think we had it like a, gr I think the uh, button is like a gray. So what we're doing is we're taking this, well, I grabbed the blue one to make this a little easier to understand. And then it's gonna go into a bitmap, which is just this. And then I have it going into the uh, background node to color it. Okay, so then we'll just connect both of these. And this is where we're at. We're gonna change this particular, so we have two of these going here to remember. I'm just going to change this one to white. And then I'm going to take this background and I'm gonna have it highlight it, shift space bar, shift space bar, and type in transform, hit enter, transform node is applied here. I'm going to take this pivot and I'm going to change the Y so that it's to the top of this bell in the middle. Let me show you why. So now if I move this angle, it's like the bell's ringing, right? If I don't have that, it'll spin in the middle. And we don't want that if we want to have like a swinging bell animation. So I'm just gonna move this up. And all I'm doing to zoom is I'm holding uh, control and then zooming in with my mouse wheel. So that looks in the middle, that looks fine. So now I can swing this back and forth like a bell. Other thing I'm gonna do with this transform is change the sizing and then just move it down to fit in this uh, window. I'm gonna move it over to here so that I have equal spacing all the way around. Might wanna think something like that. Equal spacing all the way around. Okay, and I'll come back to this whole area and why we're doing that. But for now, we have our subscribe button. And uh, now we need to think about how we wanna animate this on and off screen. So for now, I'm just gonna keep this animation the whole five seconds, so the 149 frames. Uh, and we're going to start here. So I'm coming out of this merge. I'm going to do a uh, grid warp. And then the grid warp will enable me to manipulate how this particular, everything that was fed into the grid warp, how it, um, is spit out after the grid warp. And the really cool thing is I have the text and the background, like the button, uh, into a merge and then into the grid warp. So anything that comes into the grid warp, I'm going to be manipulating. So the cool thing is if I move this like that, obviously you don't see anything because we're not playing that uh, node. So if I play that node, now we see that we really moved it around. Let me just show you here. So you can really start to manipulate how this look so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to frame 30 let's go 33 I'm just picking random frames here and we're gonna right click here click animate and the reason why we're doing that now is because the grid is perfect right because we want to come to this pristine look um, and the easiest way is to make our keyframes now so if I click on the spline and I have this grid warp and I can see that I have one keyframe there okay so now we'll come back to the beginning and we will just start to, I'm gonna change the, uh, the size of this. And I'm just gonna to start to bring these outside points into the center. So we'll bring this up to here, bring this down, bring this in, bring this corner in, and that corner, and in here. There's no perfect way to do this. I'm just kind of, and this kind of almost makes it a little bit more natural. I'm just kind of bringing it in like that. So the idea here is as I play this, it's going to open up right to our button. What we can do additionally is if clicking on the spline, clicking on this grid warp, and then showing just select it. So if you have other keyframes, they won't be shown. It'll just be the one that's uh, you have select it. I'm going to highlight this top keyframe, hit F and then hit T, or actually we don't even need T, just hit F. We're gonna grab this little um, handle 
And if I bring it above, what's gonna happen is this is the first starting point and then this is the ending point. And what we're actually doing is we're going past the ending point. So we're going to here, it's actually going to open up even more. So it's almost like a bounce, like a wham, you know what I mean? So that's what we're gonna be doing here. You gotta give me props for those awesome sound effects. Okay, so it goes in, as it works its way out, it gets big, and then it comes back and settles. All right, looking good. So, as you can see at the beginning here, it's still here, it looks gross. So after this grid warp, shift spacebar, transform, and we will add a keyframe. Let's see where we're at here. 33, we'll go to 35. Come back over to our transform node. We'll keyframe the size. Come to here, keyframe, and we'll go to zero. Now if we play this, we won't see it, and it'll start to come into existence, right? The other thing we're gonna do is on this transform, gonna hit this button so we see all of the keyframes. Gonna highlight this end one, F, T, and we're gonna ease this. So the majority of the uh, zooming happens at the beginning. So the majority of it's up until frame 10 and then it starts to slow down until it settles at 35. So if we play this, it's gonna play back the first time a little slow until it caches it. And now if we play it, that's kind of where we're at. And I feel like it's almost too slow. So I'm gonna just take this, hit F, and I'm gonna ease this like that. Okay. It's looking a little weird. So maybe a little less. All right, that's looking okay. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we want to animate this subscribe on. So maybe the button comes up, but it doesn't actually have the letters. And then once it settles, the subscribe will come out. So there are a bunch of different ways to do anything in Fusion, but I'm just gonna show you the easiest way to get this effect. So we have our text tool. We're gonna copy it, control C, control V to paste. We're gonna break this connection here. We're just gonna connect these two together. And then we're gonna grab a rectangle. Gonna connect the rectangle here, connect another rectangle, connect it to here. For this first rectangle, in the X position, we're gonna go 0.25. In the second rectangle, we're gonna go 0.75. So now we have one on one side, one on the other side. If we play these nodes, so I'll play this one, we have half of a subscribe, we have the other half of a subscribe, we have both of them, okay? So let's see where our animations stop. Animation stop on frame 35. So we'll just come in, because this is just going really slow here. So we'll just come in, let's say two frames. And for this text, I'm gonna come over to position we're gonna keyframe it and we'll just look at it here. And then we will come in a couple of frames, keyframe it again, come to this beginning part, and then we're gonna shift it over this way. And the easiest way to do this and for it to make most sense is just to put in here 0.75. And then we're gonna do the same keyframes over here. So keyframe here, come back to see where our other keyframe is right here. Gonna keyframe here, come back to this one. If we play it over here, we'll see it. For this one, we're gonna put 0.25. So now if we play both of them, they come together, right? But they're coming together and they're, they're just really quick. So what we can do is for each one, we can add easing in, and I'm just gonna go all the way to 100. Oops. Just want this top one easing in. Now if we play it, now it kind of comes in and it comes, you know, it slows down a little bit. Additionally, 
what we can add is if we come over to this button, we can add in motion blur. The higher you make the quality, the longer the render time is gonna be for the end product, but I'll just put in 25 for both of these. Anytime you add in motion blur, whatever object is doing the movement is the object that has to, you have to apply the motion blur for it to be affected. Um, so because both of these have a position move, we're gonna be adding the motion blur to these. So now if I play these, we can see a bunch of motion blur, and then as they slow down, that diminishes. So that looks a lot better. If your computer is starting to chug and slow down and not really go too fast, and you wanna edit the rest of this at you know a quicker rate, you could just right click right in here, and you can turn off motion blur. So then you can come back to the old, but the end product will still have that motion blur. We're just turning off the motion blur for the uh, preview monitor. Okay, so now let's add this back in. And now if we look at this node, we have everything added in. So we have that bounce with a blank. And then once it settles, then it comes in. We still have all that motion blur. If we want it to uh, add the motion blur to these guys, we can come in and add it to these as well. Okay, so uh, for the motion blur real quick, we have the quality, which is just how good the motion blur works, and then shutter angle. Those are the two biggest things to, to work with. Shutter angle is the uh, amount of motion blur that's added. 180 is what you would normally see on normal uh, stuff, because that's normally what you do. If you shoot at uh, 30 frames per second, you're gonna have your shutter angle at 180th uh, which is 180 degrees, um, so. All right, so now that we have all of that added in, now we have to, and we have this button or this bell, we can add them both together. So we'll go from up here to down here. And if we look at these, currently you only see the one, right? So the idea here is that we're going to have this when it comes out. So as it's coming out, let's have it maybe like right in here. We're going to bring that uh, other animation, which is the bell. Let's go to two uh, preview monitors now so we can see this. We're gonna have the bell slide out and it's gonna do like a little bounce, uh, you know, rocking back and forth. After this merge, we're gonna do another transform and we determined that right around here where this starts to come out, we're gonna have that slide out as well. So we're going to keyframe the center position on this transform. And then we're gonna come up a couple of frames and we will reveal that bell. So I would say right about there. Or actually, let's bring this up a little bit further. So let's do, no. Actually, I want it to come out hard like that. All right, so that sounded really bad. But so the idea here is it's gonna come out and it's going to stop. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to ease these. Just highlighting both of them, hitting F. So it slides out. And now for this animation here, so let's go back to one and we'll just play this. Once this stops, or let's have it start, let's come back to here. And now we are going to have this like this. We'll keyframe here. And then when it comes out, let's see where the keyframe is that it stops. It's right here. We'll go one frame after and we'll rock it the other way. Okay, and then we can come out a little bit further. And this is just really gonna be dependent on your project. Okay, so that comes out and it rocks a little bit. We can take all of these, we can smooth them out. 
And then we have a little bell uh, bouncing back and forth. If we look at all of them together, it comes out like that. Now that's looking pretty good. One thing that I don't like, actually, it looks fine. Uh, I'm gonna come into here because we have the animations on the bell. I'm gonna add it into here. I'm gonna go 25 on that bell. This transform, it has uh, movement because it's coming out like that. We're also going to add uh, motion blur onto here. So now everything kind of has motion blur. It's coming out, that's looking great. Uh, additionally, now here towards the end, wherever you want your end to be, we're gonna have to get rid of everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start off with bringing this back in. So let's just start here. I'm just picking random locations. And what we're gonna do is we're going to start this and we're going to have it uh, random keyframe, something like that. And for it to be inside of here, this just has to be 0.5. So we're just gonna go back. So, and then once that happens, one keyframe in here, actually let's go one keyframe this way. So before the animation, we're gonna keyframe uh, this position, or excuse me, not this position, I'm not keyframing this position at all. Uh, we're gonna keyframe the angle, and then one keyframe after this starts to move in, we're going to, uh, actually two keyframes in, we're going to have it uh, rotate like, let's have it rotate a bit more like that. See how this looks. Okay, it looks kind of bad. Oh, because I have this keyframe here. All right, so now let's do, All right, and if I turn everything motion blur back on, that should just be a blurry blob sliding in. So now it's just sliding in, and I can actually ease this a little bit for that um, rotation in, and then that should look pretty good, just like that. All right, so we're gonna turn off that, so we have that go in, and then once it's in, then we can start to mash everything together. So the easiest thing that I'm going to do is just right here, I'm just gonna put a transform after everything and we're going to keyframe and then come to, this is five frames. Let's do seven frames and we're just gonna go in to zero. So I'm just gonna play this one. So now it's just, uh, going in and it's just making itself small. There's a ton of different ways that you could animate this, but that's how I'm gonna do it. Maybe just uh, have this come out a little further. So something like that and then ease out like that. So it starts off slow and then it goes. Additionally, I can add in motion blur for that frame or for this transform. So now everything should have motion blur. So I think I have just about everything here. The one other thing that I think I still need to take care of is this stuff underneath. Yeah, before it uh, appears. So I'm just going to pick a spot where it's the biggest. So like right there. And I'm going to make two keyframes, one, two, the one before, this is gonna get dropped down to zero. So we just don't see anything. Underneath it becomes, and then we don't see it, and then it slides out. Subscribe, all of that stuff happens, goes back in, and then everything gets small together. So now that we have our whole animation made, now we need to save this so we can use it in other projects. Just recently, they added a uh, saver node. Now, this node, I'm guessing is gonna still get 
some stuff added to it because it doesn't have everything that the DaVinci Resolve, I mean the, the standalone has. But for now we can make this work. So we just at, at the end of our whole um, at the end of our, our whole uh, node tree, we're just going to add in that saver node. So now we have to uh, pick a location to save this. So I'm just going to make a folder inside this folder. Perfect. And then I'm just going to put sub and bell. I'm gonna change this file type. I'm gonna put dot PNG because I want them to have the transparent backgrounds and it'll be just a per frame basis. So we hit save. So now the next thing that we have to do once we have that is we're gonna come up here to fusion and then render all saver. So we click that and now it's going to render the whole project with the motion blur in and uh, yeah, it's just gonna plop it into that folder. So I'm gonna let this render quick and then I'll be right back with you. Also, while you're rendering, if an error pops up or it says that um, it stopped that frame number, uh, in my case, it was frame number 80, uh, all I had to do is just, you move these in and out points. So I just moved this, I just typed in here 80. So it goes to frame 80 and then um, you just come back up and click render and it'll start at frame and 80 to finish it So I just thought I'd add that in there, but once we're done with Adding or once we're done rendering this out all we have to do now is in our other projects We'll simply uh, so here is that rendered out um, guy and I'll just add a new folder and I'll just have it sub and bell and you just take all of your uh, frames, you put them in one folder, and now in uh, your next projects, you just simply drop it in. So let me add some footage in here. Just drop it here in the main, in the master, put it in, and then all we have to do is just click in the bell and it says it has from frame zero to 149, which is 150 frames, which is the five seconds. You bring it in here and then you just play it. And then there you go. Sounds can be a little bit differently. Uh, I don't know if I have all the sound effects that I, I used to create this. I think I used a I used a glove, so that's how I did like the the opening. So let's just uh, add that in here. Uh, bell. I don't know if I have anything in Bell. Uh, what were the other sound effects? It, it was so long ago. I don't remember all the sound effects. But so just simply come in here would kind of have this position, something like that. But I had for every little, little thing you can add like this coming out, you could have like, I don't even know what the. No. Okay, so we could have the beginning half of this, not all of that snapping. So maybe just. So something like that. And then a bell and you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. I wish I had more sound effects in here that I actually used when I made mine. But once you would have all of your sound effects in here that you want to have added, you just come over to the deliver page and you click this button so that you don't export um, video and you just do audio and then you pick uh, an audio file type that you want and then you just export just the uh, audio itself. So you could just do like a WAV file and then pick whatever you want, export it and then you have both the only other thing that you have to make sure of is because these are frames and if you set up this audio for the timing of 30 frames per second, so everything matches up, um, you're going to always have to make sure that 
this sequence of images plays back every time. And to do that, you just, if you're in a project that's 30 frames per second, it will always play back at 30 frames per second. But if you're in a different project, so if you're in a 60 frames per second project or 24 frames per second, you want all of this, you want this image sequence to be treated always as 30 frames so it can always match your audio. So to do that, you just, uh, when before you drag it down here, you just right click, clip attributes, and then you would just change this to whatever you want your frame rate to be. So if I want it to be 30, obviously that's not gonna be there, but then we drop this down and it became a little bit, so now it's at five seconds. So, cause remember we made that uh, sequence or that uh, fusion, um, that fusion comp at uh, 30 frames per second. And right now we're in a comp that's 24 frames per second. So my audio isn't um, aligned. So when you go to create the audio, you're obviously gonna want to have, make sure that everything is lined up. And then when you bring it into a project that isn't whatever the frame rate is, I might even at the end here, put like 30 FPS or something like that, just so I know that this sequence is 30 frames per second or even maybe in that folder so when i bring it in here i know that too so it's just right click clip attributes and then you just state what to play back those frames back at so that's kind of how you would create this and then um if you want to move this around you just simply have this highlighted have your uh, image sequence highlighted click this button and then you can move it around. If you want to make it smaller, you could do that, uh, make it larger, whatever it may be. And you can just move it to a different corner. And that's kind of what I do every time. Just drop it in, click this button, move it, and then you're done. But with that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you have any other, <coughs> if you have any, <laughs> if you have any other ideas or suggestions, leave them down below. Again, my name's JR. And Thanks for watching. So good, every word you say is melody.